Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, we are going to be doing the very last concept of uh, reflection and that is how to find the line of reflection. So, so far we've learned how to reflect an object if uh, you're given a straight line through which you have to reflect it. And uh, we've done the standard cases and we've done what happens when the case is not so standard. But uh, what if you're given an object and you're given an image and you're asked to find the line of reflection? So what do you do then? That's exactly what we're going to find out or learn in this video. So here uh, we're going to do this with the help of two examples. So here we have the first one. You can see that I have written the steps over here where I've, I've written that you find the midpoint, so on and so forth. I'll walk you through these steps uh, one by one. But let's let's understand what's going on over here. So triangle ABC, we have two triangles, ABC and PQR, okay? So A PQR is basically the reflection of ABC, okay? I'll write that down. So this right here, let's say this is our object. Obviously, you'll be given in the question explicitly which one's the object and which one is the image. One way to distinguish is that whatever comes onto uh, after onto is the image, okay? So here, the one in black is the object and the one in red is the image, okay? Now, so what exactly have I written over here? I've written find the midpoint of A and A prime. So what, what does that mean? That means you take any point on the object and you take the corresponding point on the image. It has to be corresponding. You can't just take random points, okay? And you find the midpoint. Now, since these points are vertically aligned, I can find out the midpoint very easily by just seeing how far apart they are and dividing the distance by two. So if I look at that, if I look at A and P, I can see that A is, uh, let's, let's just do it. Uh, let's just count the boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so they're 12 units apart. So that, mean, that means if I were to find the midpoint, the midpoint would be exactly halfway. That means six units from either A or P. So let's count from A. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So just one point below the x-axis. So I'll, I'll mark this using the color purple. Now it says here, find the midpoint of B and B prime. Okay, now if I use B and B prime over here, which is basically Q, there's gonna be a small problem. And that is we will get the same point, And that's the one that I've marked over here. That means we gotta try something else. So how about C and R? So let's count, let's see how far C and R are. And they are one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so since they're six units apart, apart that means the midpoint would be three units apart. So we mark this point, which is three units away from C. And why exactly are we doing this? We're doing this because we want to be able to make a straight line. Now, you, in order to be, make a straight line, you need two points. And now that we have the two points, what, what are we going to do? We're gonna make the straight line. So when I do that, the next thing that I have to do is find the equation of it. Now, luckily for us, this time, the straight line happened to be a horizontal one. That means I don't have to work hard to find the equation. All I need to see is that what is the point at which the line is cutting the y-axis, and that is gonna be my equation, y is equals to minus one. So there you go. That's it, that's our final answer. Now let's do another example. And in this example, things are gonna become a, a whole lot easier. Why? Let's find out. So it says here, the diagram shows triangles A and B. All right, we can see that. Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. And I should tell you that this is a question that I've taken from past papers. So in this, you have to do the whole thing. That means you have to write down whatever transformation it is. Now, right now, since we're only doing reflection, obviously it's only gonna be reflection. So the reason why it's two marks is because you get one mark for stating the transformation that you're dealing with. The next mark you get is by finding out the line of reflection. Why? Because that's what reflection is, is defined by. So how do you do that over here? So let's look at this point over here. This has coordinate zero comma one. And once this ref once it is reflected, this is where it ends up. And this has coordinates minus one comma zero. So I want you to keep an eye on both the object and the image and see what's going on in the, with their coordinates, okay? So this point right here has coordinate zero comma three. And this point right here, has coordinates minus three comma zero. Okay, so what exactly is going on? If you figured, that's great. If you haven't, let's look at the third and the final point. So minus one comma three, and this point has coordinates minus three comma one. I really hope you figured out by now because I've run out of points. I haven't actually, there's a point in between, but you know, I'm sure you figured out by now. So what you, what's going on over here is that the coordinates are being swapped and the signs are also changing. So what is the line? through which you have to reflect for this to take place, y equals to minus x. So reflection along y 
equals to minus x and that's it here you didn't even have to although we could have used the other method mark the points find out the equation got in the same answer but you know here we got away easily so yeah this is how you can find out the line of reflection and this is the last and the final concept related to reflection i hope you've understood this we're going to be starting rotation next so i'll see you guys in the next video until then take care bye bye and as always if you haven't liked this video yet please do that and make sure to subscribe to the channel